Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is a blessing for the Torah. The Torah for today, the Torah portion is called Vayetze. Say that fast. Vayetze. 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 It means Yaakov, Yaakov departed. Okay. Uh, anyhow, let's do the, uh, well, actually, I mean, you all can't do it because you don't have a copy of it. So, I'll just do it. Because the sun had set, 
He took from the stones of the place. Isn't it interesting? The Bible doesn't give us a name. It just says the place. And it calls it Makom. Of the place, he placed them around his head and he laid down in that place. And he dreamed and there appeared a ladder, that's Sulam, that was set earthward, earthward and its top was reaching heavenward. And there appeared angels of God ascending and descending on it. And then Yehovah was standing over him and he said, I am Yehovah, God of Abraham, your father, and God of Yitzchak. The ground which you are lying upon, to you will I give it and to your descendants. Your offspring shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall burst forth westward and eastward, northward and southward. Okay, so what is that? Westward? Okay, I'm going to use from your perspective. Okay, westward and eastward, northward and southward. What does that look like? Compass. It's the cross. But it's even more than that. It's it's the covenant. Because the last letter in the ancient Hebrew was a cross. Like this. Okay, that's just me. We should be doing this. So. <laughs> As us as Jews, we do this. Separate from Rome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyhow, uh, but here it's like he says, You shall burst forth. How will you burst forth? Through Yeshua, who's going to die for you? He's brought you close to the covenant, okay? But I just saw something. I, I just saw something, and I, it caused me to pause for a second. I didn't see this when I read it the first time. He said, I am Jehovah, God of Abraham, your father, and God of Yitzchak. But who was Jacob's father? Yitzchak. But he said, your father, Abraham. He didn't say, your father, Yitzchak. Okay, this is very significant. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I even know the fullness of it. This I, not, I have not received. This is not a revelation I received from the Lord just now, okay? That he said, your father... Abraham, because Abraham is supposed to be our father. Remember what Yeshua said? That, that you say Abraham's our father, but God can raise our children to Abraham from the rocks. Okay. Abraham, Abraham walked by faith, but he also listened to God, and what did God give him? Circumcision. He gave him the Torah. He gave him the laws. He gave him all the instructions. Okay, so therefore... <coughs> We are to follow the one who follows God's instructions, his ways, okay, his calendar, even, okay. But anyhow, so that is your father. The one who follows my ways is your father. Now, I think that that was, you know, I, I shared last week, you have to be careful with stuff like this. Because Yitzchak was not, he, he was, when he, was, he got older, he was a man of flesh. That's why he went, he was going to bless his brother who was who was an idol an idolater, Asaph. Okay? But his mother knew better because you remember the fight was in her womb. <laughs> remember that they were fighting Rome and and uh, Israel was fighting in her womb, the future. Okay. So your father is Abraham, God of Yitzchak. Okay. So what's happening here? He's leaving. And he's going to go to to this on, on his way to Haran from Beersheba. Uh, Beersheba means well of the sevenfold oath. That's the home. That's Israel. Okay. And he went toward Haran, which means mountain. So I want you to think of Abraham bringing his son Yitzchak up to the mountain and say, "I will take your son, your only son, offer him up on the mountain." This is what he would do to Isaac. But he's, he's having Jacob leave, and, and the names of the places he's leaving and going to is you're going to leave Israel and you're going to go up to the mountain top. Okay? There is a mountain for each of us. Okay? God, in order for us to do the ministry God's called us to, we have to have our mountain experience. Mm -hmm. We have to have an encounter with God. When we believe in Yeshua, that's our encounter. Okay. But it's even more than that. 
God wants an intimate, supernatural encounter with each of us. That's his desire. Okay, so he he it says here, look at the bottom of page one. He encountered Paga. That means he had a he, he had an entreaty and a, a beating, okay? At at the place. Well, let's go back a little bit. Abraham goes to take God, God tells him, take your son, your only son, up to a mountain that I will show you. Well, we know what that mountain is. That mountain is Mount Moriah. It's the place that this is what would happen on that mountain later. They would build the temples. Okay, Both temples would be built. Where And in those temples, there was a spiral ladder that went up three levels, symbolic of the three heavens. So everything about that mountain, everything about the Temple Mount, is ascending to the heavens. Okay? Uh, it, it's, you know, when Christina and I went the first time we went to Israel, we felt something really strong. We didn't feel anywhere else in Israel. Right, Christina? Yeah. Something that just, I could, I, I, I could only prophesy. And I have the moment recorded on a video. Uh, okay, so so anyhow, uh, it, it, it's an amazing place, that mountain. Although it's defiled right now by a dome. The dome of the rock is defiling that mountain. And God's going to remove that defilement. Okay, so uh, so he, he goes and I want you to think, why did he go there? He was actually going to Haram, but why did he go to the place? Well, they had to have known it. This whole time, is there anything okay? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, so, what, what, what happened is that they're going. They're, is, is there anything okay? Right, so the, so so when they're going up to this mountain, on the way, he says, I'm going to stop by this place. Why did Yaakov? go? Because everything he knew he was leaving, and there was some fear in him. He didn't know what his future was going to be. Okay, uh, Esau threatened, his brother threatened to kill him when his father died. And that's the last event, and, and his parents sent him off okay, to protect him. Okay, so he goes to a place that his father told him about. That his, because, listen, when, when Isaac wasn't offered up, when Yitzchak wasn't offered up on that mountain, because God stopped Abraham, because God said, now I know you will, want, that you, offer, you will offer your only son to me. Okay? And he stopped him from killing his son. However... Isaac stayed there, and Abraham went back because it says when they came back, Abraham or Abraham came back alone. Meaning Yitzchak stayed there. He was having an encounter with God on that mountain. Now Yaakov heard the story of what happened, and he says, I have to go to this place because both my father and my grandfather had an encounter on this mountain. I have to have an encounter with God. He was desperate. So he goes there. What happens? He has an encounter with God. Okay. A ladder going up to heaven in a dream. Okay. So he has this encounter at the place. It's called the place. It's called the Makom. If you go to Mount Moriah, you should say, I have found the Makom. <laughs> I have found the place. Okay. Now, to the top of page two of the notes. And he took from the stones of that place. You know what the word for stones is there? Evan in Hebrew. The first two letters, Olive and the Bet, means father. And the last two letters, the Bet and the Nun, means son. So these rocks literally mean the father and the son. So he puts, he makes up, uh, he takes up that place here. Let me just find that the spot where it says, says here. Uh, let's let's read on. So he makes the promise: I will guard you in all places that you go, and I will return you to the soil, for I will not leave you until 
Then, when I have done that which I have spoken concerning. That was verse 15 of Genesis 28. Yaakov awoke from his sleep and said, Surely, Yehovah is present in, present in his place. And I did not know when he became frightened and said, How awesome is, is this place? This is none other than the house of God. That's the temple of God. And this is the gate of the heavens. Think about that. So Yaakov arose early in the morning and he took the stone from, that he placed around his head and set it up as a monument and he poured oil on its top. So he, he takes a stone which represents the father and the son and he puts oil on it. You know what that, that is? That's where we get the word Mishiach from. Anointed one. And he makes this and he says this is the anointed one. This is Yeshua, the Messiah right here. That's what he did. He took of the rocks of that place and said, this is Yeshua the Messiah. This is the house of God. This is the temple. This is what God's trying to do with us, make us into the temple of the Lord, the anointed one, like Messiah on the earth. Okay? And, and he called the name of that place Bet El, or the house of God. However, Luz was the name of the city originally. And not a vow, a vow saying, if God will be with me. He will guard me on this way that I am going. And he will give me bread to eat and clothes to wear. And I will return in peace to the house of my father. And Yehovah will be to me God. Then this stone which I have set up as a monument, or Messiah, remember Messiah the stone, shall become a house of God. And all that you will give me, I shall repeatedly tithe it to you. Okay, I will give it to you. I am given my life, in other words, to Messiah. That's what it's saying. But it's 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 much more than that. It's Yeshua. It's it's what he was going to do for him. He is saying, if you will do this, and I will do this. Okay. Uh, you know, when you believe in the Lord, there's a promise. Okay. There's a, a covenant he makes. Okay. And in a way, you're saying, if you will do this for me, then I will give my life to you. That means my life. You no longer live for you if you're living for him. To live as Messiah, to die is gain. So we're living for him. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about that ladder. Okay. For years, I mean, the Lord showed me, I don't know, 15 years ago, I met a prophet, and she said, to me that I saw above you a ladder going into heaven. And I used to wonder about that. Well, what did that mean? What exactly did that mean? Is She said something like that. It goes wherever you go. You know, here's the thing. I would believe this. When we're in a relationship with the Lord, where we're walking with him like Abraham, where we're reliant, reliant on him for all of our needs. He said, for food, for clothing, what is that? That's the word of God. That's his covenant. He will take care of every need that we have. He will always take care of us. Okay. He will protect me from the enemy and bring me in peace to, to the house of the Lord, which is ultimately in heaven. Okay, the, the new Jerusalem. Okay. So he says, and I will and I'll, I'll worship. Him. So basically, the latter. Is what each of us should have. If we're walking correctly with the Lord, we should all have a ladder with angels ascending up and down our, over us wherever we go. This ladder is the what we have now access to the heavens. That's why it probably says in the scriptures, we sit in heavenly places with the Messiah. Yes. Okay, up and down the ladder. The spiral ladder. Now I share that one of the words for darkness uh, was connected to the ladder. Okay, because when you are in darkness, it's like you're climbing up the ladder for the light. <laughs> okay, to go to the light. Every day is like a climb. It's like the night comes at the beginning because the day begins in the evening. So we're climbing up the ladder to get to God. So that's why we should always hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
We should always be desperate for God, climbing the ladder to reach to reach into the heavenlies. That's what I want. I want the heavenlies to come down. I want it to come down to the earth. Oops. Come down to the earth. Okay, so, you know, so he was going, and he was going into a scary situation. He was alone. He was away from his family, and he was going to this land that he didn't know. Okay, and uh, let's go. Page the page five. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay. You go to the ladder. Well, we all climb the ladder. But if we look down and look back, we get stopped. And the what? If we look down and look back, we get stopped because the light is not down there, the light is above us. Yes. So we should not hold on to the past mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, our whole walk is like out of darkness into the light, so we can't look back at the old darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good thing to say. Okay. But if you look at the six vows that uh, that Yaakov made, and it's it, it's amazing because look, look at them on page five. Okay. If Elohim will be with me, that means he will come to me, bring his salvation. That's intimacy. And he will guard me on this way that I'm going. That means to keep watch over me, teach me his ways, his times, his seasons. Number three, and he will give me bread to eat. That means he will give me the word of God, which is the bread from heaven. And close the where he will be my covering, my safety, my protection. And I will return to peace to the house of my father. Peace. Within that passes all understanding that Yeshua talked about. He has prepared a place for us. Remember the New Jerusalem. And, and number six, Yahuwah will be will be to me God. That means he will always be my God and only him will I worship. And, and it says he will set up. If you do these six things for me, then this stone which I have set up will be a monument that will become the house of God. And all that you give me, a tithe it, I will repeatedly to you. Okay, look at the word for monument. It's mitzvah. Okay. And and actually that's the word monument. It actually means pillar, mustabah, or stump. Its root word, matzav, is to stand, to take one's stand. To stand as a righteous person. In other words, what he's saying here is that this stone will stand that I set up will become my house. It will be, I will stand upon it. It's not just that I'm setting up a monument. I will stand on the principles of this monument, which is Messiah. I will stand on Messiah. Even though Messiah hasn't come yet, the, the meanings of the letter, Hebrew letters here is about Messiah, the anointed one. Okay, so... Uh, Let's go on. Okay, so uh, there's more notes here for you to read and stuff and, and, and so that there's, there's a lot about the stone. Okay. Look at look at chapter 29 uh, of Genesis. Great sheet, Genesis 29, 1 to 14. Now let's take a look at that. Jacob, Yaakov, he lifted his feet and went toward the land of the people of the east. So he already had his dream and he, he got up and he started to head toward he started to head toward uh, Haran, right? Haran, actually in Hebrew, Haran. Okay. A lot of times it sounds like it's Haran. For some reason they do not want to translate it uh, as Maybe it's because you can't write Okay. But <laughs> it, you know. We were talking about uh, Genesis 29, 15 to 30. Okay. Uh, actually, no, we were talking about Genesis 29, 1 to, 1 to 14. Yeah. We were talking about uh, what, what's about to happen to Yaakov as he's on his way to Haran. Har, not Haran, Haran. Okay. And in, in English, you would spell that with a CH. 
Yes. They, I think the reason why they don't do that is because everybody would pronounce it Charan. Charan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, he saw that there was a well. Okay, so Yaakov lifted up his feet and went toward the land of the people of the east, and he saw that there was a well in the field, and there were there three droves of flocks lying beside it, for from that well they would water the droves. And the stone was large over the opening of the well. When assembled, there were all the droves. They would roll the stone from upon the mouth of the well, and they would water the flocks. Then they would return the stone over the opening of the well to, to its place. Uh, he said to them, the Yaakov, my brothers, from where are you? And they said, from Haran are we? And he said to them, do you know Levan? the son of Tachor, and they said, we know. Then he said to them, is it well with him? They said, it is well, and here is Rachel, his daughter, is coming with a flock. He said, indeed, yet, yet the day is long. Is it not time to bring the livestock, water the flocks, and go and graze? But they said, we are not able to until when are gathered all the droves, and they will roll the stone from upon the opening of the well, then we will water the flocks. He was still be speaking with them when Rachel arrived with the flocks that belonged to her father. A shepherdess was she, and it was when Yaakov saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, brother of his mother, and the flock of Laban, brother of his mother, Yaakov came forward and rolled the stone from upon the opening of the well, and he watered the flock of Laban's brother to his mother. And then Yaakov kissed Rachel, and he raised his voice and wept. And Yaakov told Rachel that a relative of her father was he, and that a son of Rivka was he. Then she ran and told her father. Okay, now, it would be all, it would take all of the people to move the stone, but Yaakov did it on his own. What is that wrong? Okay, now, what did Yeshua say? He who leads me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He had just met the Messiah pretty much in, in, a, in a supernatural experience at the mountain of God. And, and he anointed a monument, a rock monument he made with oil and, and it was uh, a powerful experience. And he was saying, Messiah, you will be my God. And, and now he was, he was like saying, for Rachel, I will uncover the well, and I will provide the water for the flood. In other words, it was a picture here of Yaakov being a type of shadow of Messiah. He was going to be the one that will water the flood. So, it, it, being that it was right after he had his, his encounter at the Makom, at the place, it's now going to bring forth the water. Okay? When we meet the Lord, we become the water carriers. We become the ones that bring the rivers of living water. Okay? Out of us. So here, Yaakov was playing his part, and he did it all on his own. And it took many men to move that stone. He did it by himself. Because he represents the Messiah. Okay, and that's what we can do. We can do a lot of things. We can do all things for Messiah who strengthens us. Yes. Supernaturally. Okay. Did you understand that? Okay. But anyhow, uh, but he was also excited about Raphael. He says, oh, she's beautiful. She's beautiful, Abba! That's how it was. It says, it, it says he raised his voice and he wept. She's so beautiful. <laughs> I brought that. Maybe it wasn't like that. I mean, it was. It says, it says oh, wow. he, he raised his voice and he wept. He was that excited about the hell. <laughs> okay, and Yaakov told Rachel. Okay, so, yeah, uh, uh, okay, let's go on. And so we're, we're on, uh, and it was that Laman heard the news. Of Yaakov, son of his sister, he ran toward him, hugged him, kissed him, and brought him to his house. He recounted to Laban all these events. Then say to him, did Laban, nevertheless, my bone, 
and my flesh you are. And he stayed with him a month of days. And Laban said to Yaakov in verse 15, Just because my relative you are, should you serve me for nothing? Tell me, what are your wages? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the older one was Leah, and the name of the younger one was Rachel. And the eyes of Leah were soft, while Rachel was beautiful uh, a form and a beautiful appearance. Now, now uh, since I've heard different interpretations of this. People have told me she was ugly, and in most of the movies about Leah and Rachel, that's how they portray it. But in reality, it, her eyes were worn because of the crime. And the rabbis say she loved God. And she was tormented by the idols of her father. Okay. And and so she would cry a lot. Okay. And anyhow, so that's why it says that they were soft. And But Rachel was an idolater like her father. She was a full-on idolater. Listen, when... when Israel left Egypt. Many of them had become idolaters, and they had, and they had, even though uh, they were following God, they still had idols, and they traveled with their idols. So what we're going to see is the similar things that went on with the whole nation of Israel to what's going on here with the story of Yaakov. So I want you to imagine Israel's now gone into Egypt. In the story of Joseph that we're going to read, how they're going to go into Egypt. Okay, well, Yaakov is experienced a similar type of shadow and picture of going into Egypt. He's outside of the land that's considered Egypt or the world. Okay, so, uh, so then it says, you know, that, that Rachel was beautiful. But see, beauty is not, you might see it on the surface, but inside of her was like, it was like, what do they call that? Uh, whitewashed tomb. It's like a tomb, a dead man's bones. Okay. That looks good on the outside. We can't be deceived by what we see. Why what we perceive as beautiful, because it's not what God sees, how God sees, because God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. Now Yaakov loved Rachel. So he said, I will work for you seven years for Rachel, your daughter, who is younger. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I give her to another man. Reside with me. So Yaakov worked for Raphael seven years, and they were in his eyes like a few days because of his love for her. So he worked seven full years, and Yaakov said to Laban, Give up for my wife, and fulfill on my stipulated days, and I will come to her. So Laban gathered all the people to the place, and he made a feast. And it was in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he came to her. And Laban gave to her Zilpah, his maidservant, to Leah, his daughter, as a maid servant, and it was in the morning that here she was Leah. <laughs> so she said to Levon, What is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why have you deceived me? Levon said, It is not done so in our place to give the younger before the elder. It would be nice if he said something, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, complete the week of this one. Now, what does that mean? Seven day wedding week. Seven days, complete her week, and we will give to you also the other one for the work which you will perform for me another seven years in addition. In other words, promise me you will spend another seven years in my service. I will give you Rachel after you have your wedding week with Leah. Okay? I will give you Rachel so you will have Leah and Rachel, but you have to serve with me another seven years. Okay, so. Basically, he would get, at the end of the week, he would get Raquel, but he would still have to serve under Laban for seven more years because he got Raquel. Okay, and Yaakov did so, and he completed the week of this one, and he gave him Raquel, his daughter, to him as a wife, and Laban gave to Raquel his daughter Bilhah, his maidservant to her as a maidservant. He came also to Raquel, and he loved also Rachel, but more than Leah, and he worked for him another seven years additional. And Jehovah saw that I'm loving Leah. So here it becomes a competition for children, for attention. But in the names of the children of Israel, which many of them were named 
by the women, okay, by Leah and by Rachel, okay, or how they were trying to compete for the love of Yaakov. Okay. But e even in the day, this is a wonderful picture and plan of God for all of, of the people of God forever. Okay. So anyhow, let's let's go on, okay? Uh Okay, so we're going to just skip all this, all the competition. But I have the meanings and how they're related to, to the festivals and, and things like that in here, so you can study that on your own. Okay. Uh, go to page. Okay, go to page nine. So, these are seven years. For what he thought was going to be Raquel ended up being Leah. He shows another seven years for Raquel. So how much is that? Fourteen more years. And it says for the flocks he served another six. So a total of twenty years. Like two thousand years. The Jews have been scattered in the nations. Under the whims of the nations that they were scattered under. Okay. So he's in the spiritual Egypt. Okay. Israel, now get this, Israel was in Egypt for 210 years. Again, it's very similar to the 2,000 years when they come out. So these patterns are patterns that we're going to see that, that, that happen over and over again. Okay, But when it was time for him to go, there was a signal. Okay, And that signal was in Genesis 30, 25 to 43. And I'm coming around to this revelation I want to share with you. And it was when Raquel had given birth. So Raquel finally gave birth. Okay? Why do you think God waited so long? Because of the wickedness in her heart. Because of idolatry in her heart. But also there was something God was planning to do. Okay? By the way, it was idolatry that took her life as well. Mm -hmm. when, she was, when she was about to have Benjamin, before she had Benjamin, before she, she was pregnant with, with Benjamin, or Benjamin, okay, she, when, when the father, we're going to get into this, when, when uh, her father, Levant, caught up with them, he was searching for, for his idols. Why? Because Rachel took his, uh, her, her father's idols, okay? And she hid them. So this is how much she loved the idols. One, one second. This is how much she loved the idols. She sat on them and said, I'm on my period. Pretty much it, it you know, the way he would say it. I'm, I'm in my time. Okay. And therefore, his, their father was searching for, through the camp, for these idols. and couldn't find them because Rachel was sitting on them. Yes, God, Christine. But also, it was a lot deeper than that because Laban was justifying going after. Yahweh and right. everybody by the idols. By, not by the idols. He said, "Oh well, I came after you because you know you all took my idols." But uh, actually, he used that, you know, to. He wanted to take everything. Yes, away. he wanted to justify, and I think that's why it was, God was so hard on 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 uh, Raquel. Right. You know? Well, that that's true. That's very true. Uh, we're going to get into that right now. Okay. Uh, but look at what happens. We'll go back to here, verse 25 of, of Genesis 30. And it was when Raquel had given birth to Yosef, Yaakov said to Levan, Send me, and I will go to my place, which is my home. He wanted to go back to that mountain. And to my land, give me my wives and my children whom I have worked for you for them, and I will go, for you know my work that I work for you. But he said to him, Levantin, if now I have found favor in your eyes, I have learned by divination, by idol worship, that Jehovah has blessed me on account of you. And he said, specify your wage to me and I will give it. But he said to him, you know the manner in which I work for you and the way in which your livestock were with me. For the little that you had before I came has burst forth in abundance. As Jehovah has blessed you with my coming, and now, when will I do something myself as well for my house? 
He said, what shall I give you? And Yaakov said, you shall not give me anything. If you will do for me this thing, I will return, I will pass your flocks, and I will guard them. I will pass through all the flocks today. Remove from there every lamb speckled and spotted, every lamb brown except from the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. That will be my wage. Okay, and God used this to turn everything around, and he even gave wisdom in a dream to Yaakov on how to get all the animals, but to take it from the enemy. We're going to get into this in a second, okay? But, but what I wanted to say here is Yosef being born means everything's about to change. It's time. It's a signal, okay? It's a signal to, that I can go back. Okay, page 10. Okay, so... Going down, I'm going to look at the second paragraph from the top. Looking at Genesis 30, 31 to 34, okay, uh, and what he, he talks about, what we had just read about the speckles and the spotted. In verse 33, it says, Testify for me, show my integrity on the day of the morrow, when it will come regarding my weights before you, any that is not speckled or spotted among the goats, or that is not brownish among the sheep, stolen it is. If it is in my possession. And Laban said, Yes, if only it will be according to your word. So he removed on that day the he goats that were ringed, and the spotted ones, and all the goats that were speckled and were spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the brownish ones among the sheep. And he gave them over into the hand of his son, and he put a journey of three days between himself and between Yaakov. And Yaakov was tending the flocks of Laban that were left. Then take for himself the Yaakov a rod of poplar that was moist, and a hazel and a chestnut. Okay, is that hazelnut the same as hazelnut? Like, uh, mm -hmm. chestnut. He peeled in them the peelings that were white, that revealed the white that was on the rods. And he set up the rods which he had peeled in the running streams and the receptacles for watering to which would come the sheep to drink, facing the sheep. So they would become aroused when they would come to drink. So the sheep became aroused from seeing the rods, and the sheep gave birth to rank ones, sheep speckled ones, and spotted ones, and the lambs. Yahweh segregated, and he positioned the face of the flocks toward the rank ones, and all the brownish ones among the flocks of Laban. He set up for himself droves separately, and he did not place them with the flocks of Laban. And it would be that whenever it was arousal time for the flocks that were early bearing, Yahweh would place the rods before the eyes of the sheep in the running streams to arouse them from the rods. But when the flocks were late barren, he would not place them. Thus were the late barren ones to Laban and the early barren ones to Yaakov. The man burst forth in his prosperity extraordinarily. Okay, yeah. And he had flocks that were multiplied, maid servants and servants, camels and donkeys. Okay. And he heard the words of the sons of Laban saying, Jacob has taken all that belonged to our father, and from that which belonged to our father, he had amassed all this wealth. And Yaakov discerned that the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not with him as yesterday and the day before. Now I want you to, to think about something here. Okay? He who cheated whom? Laban cheated Yaakov. Mm -hmm. But when when Israel was cheated and enslaved by Egypt, when they left. They took and spoiled the Egyptians, okay? And so it is. This is why it says in the scriptures that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It's a principle. When you touch my people, I will take everything you have and give it to them. Yes, thank you, Lord. This is what's come, okay? They have done a great steal and a great robbery, and it's about to be taken from them. By the righteous, by the kingdom people, it's a principle. It exists in the whole earth when you're re when you're regarding the people of God. You touch the people of God. You touch Israel. You are going to lose it all. It's going to be taken from you. That's the principle. Okay. So, but also, did you notice something? The face was not as it was yesterday. 
Laban no longer treated Yaakov in a trustworthy fashion as he did. Well, what happened to Pharaoh? Remember the description that said, a Pharaoh rose up that did not know Yosef. In other words, before Israel had plenty and they were blessed, and then all of a sudden a Pharaoh rose up and they started attacking the children of Israel and putting them into bondage, into slavery, and taking everything they have and ripping them off. And in the end, Israel, they, they amassed wealth from Egypt. God says, go get it from your neighbors. Take it from your neighbors. Because they were afraid, the Egyptians. And now, this is what's going to happen. If I'm correct, and I think this is going to happen like this, God is going to give such a wisdom to the, his people that we're going to take the wealth from the wicked. He's going to give us a wisdom to do it. Okay, is it this is what Trump is trying to do now. Well, yeah, it's going to be Trump's going to be others, but it's, there's going to be something that's going on that or, or it's going to be happening, may already be happening, in which we're going to take the wealth from the wicked. It's going to be given over to the righteous, but to those who will build the kingdom. Okay, so, okay, now, now, Looking at uh, Levant's name, it means white. Okay, Satan comes as an angel of white light. Second Corinthians eleven, twelve to fifteen. Levant is a clear symbol of the Antichrist or the false Messiah. The form, this form of white is the most impure, full of pride and self righteousness. Yaakov is about to leave all he has into the wilderness of testing and purifying. It, if it is not needed, then why do it? Yeshua said he came for the sick, the speckled, the spotted, and the brown seed. You hear that? <laughs> Yeshua came for the sick, the speckled, the spotted, and the brown seed. He didn't come for those who think that they're so perfect. He came for... I, I feel like he's talking about us, though. Yes, he is. Yes, and, and about what we're going through now at this time. Yes. Yeah. And he's, he's only chooses what the world considers weak and speckled and spotted and brown. Okay. And that's Matthew 4, 24, Matthew 8, 16, and Matthew 9, 10 to 13. Okay. Uh, so Messiah is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle or blemish. That's all of us. He sees us as without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And that is in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, 1 Timothy 6, 13 to 15, Hebrews 9, 13 to 14, 1 Peter 1, 15 to 20, 2 Peter 3, 13 to 15. Okay. The persecution from Laban is a type of shadow of the persecution of Pharaoh. Just prior to the time of the Exodus in the book of Exodus, this happened to Yaakov, and it will happen as the, at the end as well with the Antichrist, the false messiah in the book of Revelation 12. Remember, he's going to go after Israel, but he will fail. He will not be able to get a hold of Israel, so he'll start killing all the believers. Okay? So what I'm saying is that for the great tribulation, he, will, he, he won't be able to stop Israel. Israel's going to take it all away. Okay? So that's going to happen at the end, too. Okay, so um, anyhow, so th this is where we're going to come into this revelation. Okay, so look at chapter 31, uh, and, and we'll start off here at verse 4. Okay, so we're in Genesis 31 from 1 to 54. Okay, we're going to break this down. Okay, this is what I'm, gonna sh what I'm primarily going to share out of. When he heard the words of the sons of Levan, saying, Yaakov has taken all that belonged to our father, and from that which belonged to our father, he amassed all this wealth. Yaakov discerned the countenance of Yaakov. I'm sorry. Yaakov discerned the countenance of Levan, and indeed it was not with him as yesterday and the day before. And Yehovah said to Yaakov, Return to the land of your fathers and to the birthplace of and I will be with you. Yaakov sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock. And he said to them, Discern, do I discern do I the countenance of your father that is not toward me as yesterday and the day before? But the God of my father was with me. Now you have known that with all my strength I have served your father. Yet your father mocked me and changed my wage ten times, but did not 
but not permit him did God to do harm to me. If thus he would say, speckled ones shall be your wages, then they would bear all the flock speckled ones. And if thus he would say, great ones shall be your wages, then they would bear all the flock great ones. Thus God salvaged, salvaged the livestock of your father and gave them to me. And it happened at that time the sheep were ready for mating, that I raised my eyes and saw in a dream, and indeed he goats that mounted the sheep were ranked, speckled and checkered. And he said to me, the angel of God in a dream, Yaakov. And I said, here I am. He named me. And he said, raise now your eyes and see that all the eagles that are mounted the sheep are ranked, speckled and checkered. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Beit El, where you anointed there a monument, and where you vowed to me there a vow. Now arise, go out from this land, and return to the land of your birth. Then Rachel, Rachel and Leah replied and said to him, Is there still for us a share and an inheritance in the house of our fathers? Is it not that as strangers we were considered by him? In other words, he treated his daughters very badly. No lie. For he has sold us and even totally consumed our money. In other words, it's slavery. Rather, all the wealth that God has salvaged from our father to us, it belongs to our children. So now, everything that God has said to you, do. Okay. Yaakov is going to take the wealth of the wicked mm -hmm. from the wicked. In this case, Laban. Okay. The beginning of anti-Semitism is always what happened in Egypt. What, what is happening today. They are coming against Israel today. Mm -hmm. Those on the left. The people over there, the Democrats and, and even Republicans who are siding with them and compromising with them, including believers who are compromising with them. Okay? And it's all going to be reversed. Pretty soon, and the wealth of the wicked, even those in the church, those mega churches and stuff, their wealth is going to be turned to the kingdom. Okay? This is inevitable. It's going to happen. And who are they going after? They're going after the believers. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. They're trying to take away all of our rights. Okay? Because it's 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 like what anti-Semitism is. It's not just anti-Semitism toward Israel and the Jews. It's anybody who stands up for God. Any conservative. They're trying to take away uh, everything that we have. They're, 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 they're taking away uh, the price of oil that was already... <clears throat> you know, fixed and done well by, by President Trump and then they're, they've taken away all the places, people are losing jobs they have done nothing but evil to come against conservatives all who supported President Trump they didn't need to do that, they could have kept all Trump's plans that were very good for this nation they didn't do it Okay, so therefore, they, in fact they actually overturned the good things they threw the baby out with the bathwater and because they've done that they sought to destroy the conservatives and the Republicans, the true Republicans, and, and not the compromised ones. And now it's going to be taken off from them. It's going to be completely taken away from them. And okay. I just saw that um, seven Republicans had just joined or changed mm -hmm. their votes, and they're going to vote with the Democrats. Yeah. And yeah, so... Uh, okay, so oh, let's see where we at. Okay, so so uh, okay, we were on top of verse seventeen. Yaakov arose and lifted his children and his wives onto camels. He led all of his livestock and all his wealth which he had amassed, the purchase of his acquired property which he has amassed in Padam Aram, to go to Yitzchak his father to the land of Canaan. And Laban had gone to shear the sheep, and Rachel stole the teraphim that belonged to her father, the false gods, the gods of stone and wood. Jacob stole the heart of Laban, the Aramean, by not telling him that he was fleeing. Thus he fled, he and everything that he had, and he rose up and he crossed the river, and he set his face toward Mount Gilead. Now, isn't it interesting? It says he crossed the river. Well, did not Israel? Cross the Red Sea. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But anyhow, 
It was told to Laban on the third day that Yaakov had fled. So he took his brethren with him and he chased after him a journey of seven days. Remember, what if after, after his, Egypt was destroyed, what happened? He raised up all of his chariots and his horsemen to go after Israel. So this, you see how this pattern's repeating? Okay, a journey of seven days and he caught up with them on Mount Gilead. And God had come to Laban, the Aramean, in a dream in the night and said to him, Guard yourself lest you speak with Yaakov from good or bad. The Laban overtook Yaakov, and Yaakov had pitched his tent on the mountain when Laban had stationed his brethren on Mount Gilead. Laban said to Yaakov, What have you done that you have stolen my heart and that you have led away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why have you been stealth, stealthy to flee and you deceived me? And you did not tell me, for I would have sent you off with happiness. Now, you see how he makes these words out? You deceived me. I didn't deceive you. You see how, what Laban was doing? This is what the left is going to do. How dare you? You know, you deceived us. And then you said that, you know, this, the president, or the, the president uh, Biden was, was president. And yet, now you put President Trump back in? You deceived us. <laughs> this is what I saw. This is what I, I saw them, them saying. And the cause of our protest is you accepted that we had another president. It's like, no, it was never accepted. But this is going to replay itself in our time. Hmm. Okay? <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and like you said, Christina, earlier, He's going to use the excuse of the gods. You did not tell me, for I would have sent you off with happiness, with songs, with drama, with lyre. Mm -hmm. And you did not even allow me to kiss my grandsons and my daughters. Now you have been foolish to act so. There is in the power of my hand the ability to do to all of you harm. But the God of your father last night said to me, saying, guard yourself from speaking with Yaakov from good or, or, bad, or to bad. Now, you have certainly left because you long greatly for the house of your father, but why did you steal my gods? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, actually, that was an excuse he used, but he knew that he had to leave, but at the same time, you know, why did you steal my gods? <laughs> <laughs> so how does that translate into today? You know, I don't know. Maybe the Lord will reveal, reveal it, okay? Yaakov answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid, for I said, now this is interesting, Yaakov said this answer. But he wasn't answering about the gods. He was answering about the first part, why he had to leave. I was afraid, for I said, for fear that you might steal your daughters from me, with whomever you find your gods, he shall not live. So who pronounced the judgment on his wife? Taken. Rakhav. Jacob, in the presence of our brother, identify for yourself which is with me, and take it for yourself. Now he did not know Yaakov that Rachel had stone, stolen them. Laban came into the tent of Yaakov, and into the tent of Leah, and into the tent of the two maid servants, but he did not find anything. Then he left the tent of Leah, and he came to the tent of Rachel. Now Rachel had taken the terror and put them into a saddle cushion in the other camel, and saddled them, and Laban rummaged through the whole tent, but he did not find anything. She said to her father, Let it not cause anger in the eyes of my Lord, that I cannot rise up before you, for the way of women is upon me. Thus he searched, but he did not find the therapy. Then Yaakov became angry, and he argued with Laban. And Yaakov responded and said to Laban, What is my transgression? That is my sin, that you have hotly pursued me. When you rummaged through all my utensils, what did you find? Fine of all your utensils, of all the utensils of your house. Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, and let them decide between the two of us. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your sheep goats never miscarried, and the rams of your flocks I did not eat. That which was magnified beasts I never brought to you. I myself would bear the loss. From my hand you would demand it, whether it was stolen by day or stolen by night. This is how I was by day, and I was consumed by scorching heat, frost by night. 
Drift away did I sleep from my eyes. This is to be twenty years in your household I served you. Fourteen years for your two daughters, six years for your flocks, and you changed my wage ten times. Were it not for the God of my father, the God of, of Abraham, and the fear of Yitzchak, who was with me certainly now, I'd be handy, you would have sent me away by suffering my toil on my hands. God saw and he admonished you last night. Okay, and then, you know, it goes on and on like this. Okay, so, you know, what I want you to see here is that even though Pharaoh died, you know, uh, and by the way, this also happened with Abraham. Do you remember when there's a famine in the land? Abraham went down to Egypt. And you remember, Pharaoh almost took his life. And they gave him all sorts of gifts. And you know what? They gave him a bunch more stuff. Servants and other stuff. And they said, don't touch these people. When, he, when the Pharaoh found out that it was Abraham's wife. Because God was judging Egypt by plagues. This happens over and over and over again. He doesn't change. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it was probably about the time of Passover when all this happened. All these things happen over and over and over again. Because God has a timetable. He has a calendar. And he's repeating these things over and over again to tell us, this is how I work. This is the time that I keep. Okay, so, you know, it's... The, things are about to change. Okay, things are about to move. Okay, and you know, I don't know how much longer we have before this complete change occurs. Okay, but I think it's very interesting that you know, this coming April is when we have the Passover next. And I think by the time that whole time comes, this whole thing is going to be like changed. But I don't think God's limited to that. It could be changed sooner than that. And I'll tell you why. Because, because he hasn't followed any of the times that I thought he was going to follow. Because even though he's not following it by our physical days on this earth, he is still following it. It's just not in the times that we have. He has his own calendar. And he told me, he told me uh, I don't know, six or seven months ago, I have multiple calendars within calendars, but I'm still doing things by these calendars. In other words, may not necessarily be on the calendar that I gave to Israel that I'm going to do things. Although I do do things every year during those times, I'm still operating in that time. And there's going to be a coming out of Egypt of my people. This is when this whole thing reverses. Okay, It's the coming out of Egypt moment. Okay? The enemy has been trying to destroy us and he's chasing after us. This is where we're at right now. But remember what happened. God opened up the sea. And he says, these Egyptians you see today, you will not see anymore. So at some point, this whole thing's going to get exposed on the left. And it's going to be the fulfillment. And we are going to be truly free, like we've never been free. And it, that could happen at any time. But it still is following this calendar, this timetable. Even if it's not on our days, and even the Jewish calendar and God's calendar. Okay, he's not limited. Although I still think we're in a Noah timeline too. Even though the finished, something changed in the atmosphere. The spiritual realm changed on the day, what was it? On the day of elections. The beginning of November, the election mm -hmm. day. November 2nd. Oh yes, November 2nd. Something changed in the atmosphere. I really believe in the spirit realm, it was all finished. And now we're just waiting for it to manifest in the physical. And it will. Okay, so, you know, I want you guys to see that. Okay, so all these things happen, happen again and again, over and over. There arose a new king that did not know Yosef. That's in Exodus 1 8. The wealth of the wicked being turned over to the righteous. That happens over and over again. The coming of the glory, the stealing of an election, like Jake, uh, like uh, Laban stealing from Jacob. Okay. It's all going to be turned back over. Okay, so are you following this okay? Mm -hmm. The robbery of Levan, okay, is like the robbery of the Democrats. Uh, it will happen at the coming of the Messianic Kingdom at the end. That's it. And maybe even a couple of times. You know, this is going to happen. We know that it's going to happen to set off to bring in the kingdom. Okay. 
Uh, now this last tent of Laban to catch up and take everything from Yaakov is like Pharaoh's last attempt to wipe out Israel at the, at the Reed Sea. Okay, so all these things are happening over and over. It'll be like the false messiah at the very end trying to wipe Israel out. But what happens? Well, you have to read... Uh, oh, I don't have that one. Uh, Book of Revelation, chapter 12. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Uh, and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars, and she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor, and in pain to give birth, and another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head were seven diadems, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male child who was a rule of nations with a rod of iron, which we know is Messiah, Jesus. Who brought forth Messiah? Israel. Okay. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God where she might be nourished for 1,206 days, which is three and a half years, the time of the great tribulation. Okay. And then, so, so, you know, it, he, he then... He, he, he's, it's, it talks about a war in heaven and Satan and his angels being completely thrown out of heaven. They don't have any right there. I guess today they do, but they won't at that point. And it says they were not strong enough. There was a war in heaven, verse 7. Okay. Uh, and like those angels waged war with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough, and there was no longer a place found. For them in heaven, and a great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah has come, for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life, even to death. For this reason rejoice, O heavens, for you who dwell in heaven. Woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing he has only but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. So here comes the persecution of Israel again. Okay. And the two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman in order that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she would be nourished for a time. That's one year of times, two years. And a half a time, a half a year. So three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. And the serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, so that he might cause her to be swept away and with the flood. And the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon poured out of his mouth. Now what is this going to manifest? It's going to manifest as something pretty pretty big. In which it's going to be comparable comparable to the exodus from Egypt. When this happens to Israel, they're going to realize that the God of Israel is as real to that day as he was in, in the book of Exodus. And they will not even say anymore, the Lord God who led us out of Egypt, but the Lord God who led us out of all the nations and brought us to this place. Okay? And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. So all the believers he starts killing. All the believers who follow God's commandments now. That means they've been taught the Torah and follow him. So that means we have a great job ahead of us because we're preparing for that. We're preparing to teach the, the great tribulation believers that are going to give their life for God, for Messiah, and they're going to be keeping the commandments. It's it with a, with a, a focus on Yeshua. Okay? So, so this this is really important. 
So Israel is going to be protected in a wilderness for three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, while the believers who are considered the children of Israel, because they follow the ways of God, okay, so they're going to be considered the rest of the offspring who keep the commandments of God and hope in the testimony of Yeshua. These could be Messianic Jews, these could be uh, these could be uh, uh, Christians, it doesn't matter at that point. They're going to be following God's commandments, and they're going to be believing in Yeshua, and it's going to cost them their life. The killing of the believers, this is at the end. Okay, The last act of the believers is to die. It's to die as martyrs. Okay. So, uh, but anyhow, well, why did I bring you to this? Because what happened before is going to happen again, and there's nothing new under the sun. That's what it says in Ecclesiastes. And what's happening today is the coming of the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's as big as the coming of Messiah the first time, and as the second coming physically back to the earth. The coming of the glory is going to be, it's going to be kicked off with a trumpet sound. Because it's the beginning of the time of bridal preparation, where the shofar is blown every day. It's preparing for the coming of the kingdom. And I don't know how long this period's going to last because if we've been in the wilderness for three, there's three months after Shavuot. Three months of the wilderness and one month of Elul. The three months of the, of, of the wilderness is over. The time of the wilderness of the bride is over. We are coming into the time of bridal preparation. And it's going to be kicked off with the Trump. With President Trump, Okay. I'm not saying he's going to remain president forever. I'm saying he's going to be kicked off. He's the catalyst for the greatest move of God since the time of the book of Acts. And it's going to be, it's going to finish the preparation of the bride to meet the Lord. How long is that going to last? I don't know. I'm not, I don't believe that it's going to be three or four years. I think it's going to be like 10 or 20 years. And it may be longer than that. But it's going to be, we're going to have a time full of glory and habitation where people are going to come in to the Lord because we're going to be the ones that are going to be blessed because the wealth of the wicked will be given over to us. And, mm -hmm. and great inventions and creations are going to be given to believers. To believers are going to be given inventions. You know, <coughs> there's going to be people that are not even scientists that God's going to reveal heavenly inventions that he wants that's going to transform our life so that the world will look and say how real God is because he's using something that doesn't know. This is what's come. The wealth of the nations. But more than that, also the glory of the Lord and the anointing and the habitation like we can't even imagine. But anyhow, uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to share. Um, you know how this whole portion ends? Look at, in chapter 32 of, the, of uh, Genesis. And we'll finish with this. Okay. Look at, at how it ends. So after Laban leaves and says, okay, have a great time. Go back to your family. This is what he says. And Laban woke early in the morning and he kissed his sons and his daughters and he blessed them. And Laban went and returned to his place. And Yaakov went on his way and counter him the angels of God. And Yaakov said when he saw them, a camp, Vahane Elohim, a camp of God is this. So they call the name of that place Machanayim. Okay, it's the camp of God. It's a pair of camps that are of angels. We have angels. We're going to be in charge of camps of angels. Okay, listen. It started with an encounter on a mountain, and it ends with an angelic encounter. Okay? This is what's in store for us in the coming days. This is the authority through the Messiah that's been given to us because of humility, because of brokenness, because we have, we have not chosen to lift ourselves up of the people and be like the world, we says we're going to follow him, even if it means humiliation, if they put us down and they don't want us to meet in their building, <laughs> whatever, you know, there's different, different reasons, okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's going to, it's going to, God is going to turn it over to us, okay? So just, just be encouraged and be strengthened 
that what's happening now is is what's happened before, and that God's in total control of it, and we are going to see it. They, the world thinks we're insane. Okay, I'm sure Jacob was thinking that. How can I leave? He's going to take my whole family away from me. He may even said it. I thought that I would leave empty-handed. It wasn't turning out. You know, they all think we're crazy over there. You know, they, they think that the conservatives are nuts. We're, we've lost it. You know, that, that, you know, it's like, you know, for believing what we believe. Okay? But God is going to turn it all around. You know, the, the other day I was at Walmart and, uh, and I, I was returning something and, and I ended up getting conversations with three separate conservatives. Okay? Two in the line to get the refund, and the other one outside of it who came up to me, who knew me, and who met me at one of the gatherings when I used to get together with the Republican thing. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about these things, okay? There's a lot of excitement among the people. The patriots are getting more stirred up, mm -hmm. okay? This nation we're going to take back. Israel's going to be taken back by the righteous. Israel also has bad leadership. God is going to take over that Israel, and he's going to have leadership after his heart, like a David. There's going to be a David over this nation, and there's going to be a David over, over Israel. Okay, And the whole world is going to be transformed in the coming days. And, and everything, the way we've done things, is going to be gone. It's all going to be new. It's going to be a whole new thing because it's the final move. It's the end, and above everything else, above all the things, and the suffering, and the, and the complaints, and all that, when this is all finished, everybody's going to be happy in a way that they've never been happy. And we're going to realize that, you know, it's like, God's kingdom is a better system than the world system. Because <laughs> God is going to have his way on this earth through his people. And that's why we have such a great mission ahead of us. We have to bring back the ancient path, the ancient ways, because they're the righteous ways of God. Yeah. So uh, let's do the closing blessing of the Father. Baruch Abba, I thank you, Lord, for the revelation, Lord, of your word, that what you've done before you will do again. And then we're going to see, Lord, this great move of your spirit, Abba, this great revival, this great miracle, Lord. And the world is going to see, Lord, who is yours and who is not. Um, and you're going to show the difference between the righteous and the wicked, Lord. And you're going to expose all the evil deeds of the wicked, Abba, even all the way down through the church, because judgment starts at the house of God, although it's going to start at, at the high levels, because you're judging, you're judging uh, things in, in high places. And you know, what is it that we said, we even sang about, that we wrestle not against no, flesh and blood, we're going to get power, we power. power. So God's going to take, Lord, you're going to take down the principalities in the highest places first, and then you're going to come all the way down and you're going to take it down in every place, up down to the lowest. And you're going to raise up the humble and the broken, uh, but the poor, the widow, and the orphan. And you're going to bring down the arrogant and the prideful, Abba. There's no room for pride, Abba, among your people, Abba. I know, Lord, that, that you are going to get the glory. The whole world is going to give you glory. And they're going to recognize how real you are. Maybe they'll, they'll look and they'll say, man, those conservatives weren't wrong. And they will again listen. Lord, to those who are, who are wise among your people, Abba. And learn your ways, Abba, again, in the earth, Lord, that your truth will be preached in the earth. The truth of your kingdom. Your kingdom will once again be preached the way it was intended to be, Abba. Thank you, Lord, for your love that is shed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for your, the sacrifice of Yeshua, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for sealing us, Lord, for the day of redemption, Abba, for bringing us into your kingdom, Lord, for such a time as this, to be in the earth for such a time as this, Lord. Help us, Lord, 
to fall in line and take our place in this great move that you're about to do, in this great work you're about to do, this finishing work, Abba. Lord, remove the spots and blemishes, remove the wrinkles and the spots and, and the speckled this inside of us, Abba, in the name of Yeshua. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus our Messiah, the soon coming King, who's bringing his glory to the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.